Uh, welcome to the Board of Selectors meeting for Monday, August 12th, 2013. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes. That sounds quite a message. Um, Brad will sit next to me. All right. We have some information about a pledge of a license for PMP Liquors Inc. DBA Pop and Cork at 1A Cape Road. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Arthur Perlman. I'm uh, one of the principals of PMP Liquor. Uh, I'm also an attorney. Uh, I, I do a lot of liquor licensing work. Um, do you want me to explain what this is about? Sure, th please. Right. What it is is we borrowed money when we uh, bought the business and fixed it up and everything like that. The bank wants a pledge of the license. The bank can do on its own a UCC, get a security interest in the license, so that would stop some other person from possibly buying the business from us and thinking they were going to get the license. They know they'd have to deal with the bank because they've, they've got the UCC on it. However, it's not a pledge of a license. A pledge of a license means that we're actually, um, with your approval, um, giving the bank the right to at least apply for that license. They can either themselves or they can sell it to someone else because they're trying to protect their loan. They can uh, bring someone else in who wants to buy the business and know that they can get that license transferred to them if they qualify. They would still would have to go to you, mm -hmm. qualify. They would still have to go into the ABC, qualify. But if they did, they at least know they're protected and they've got it. And that's, it's, a, it's, it's a little bit more protection and insurance that their money's protected than just filing a UCC with the Secretary of, of State. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't foresee a huge problem with it. If you could like to draw something up, we'll get it over to our town council, we'll get them to approve it. And I gave it to you, didn't I? You've got it. Oh, would you got the pledge? I, I emailed it to you, and oh, then I do have it. <laughs> yeah. and, and they're and they're normal. This is not unusual. Yep. Okay. Sometime, if we know who our bank is before we come to get the transfer of license, we'll bring the pledge with us and ask you to approve the pledge at that time. And if you do approve it, you then send it to the ABC and the ABC has to approve it. It's like any other dealing with a license, both the town or the city and the ABC both have to approve it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so long as, um, yeah, I was more concerned with whether or not we have any uh, involvement in, in what, what happens to that license in, in the Absolutely. event it goes, nothing it goes south. Yeah, nothing can happen without an approval process through your town and the ABC every time anything happens with that license. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I, I don't, I don't have an issue with it. Um, <clears throat> like I said, we'll just, uh, we can approve it pending uh, town council's review. Um, I, I, and, and just so you know, the, uh, we're not trying to delay or anything like that. We're without a town coordinator or a town administrator at this point, so a lot of stuff we've been sending through council, especially when it comes to legal items like this. That's sure. all. So uh, that's 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 the path we'll take with this. And as soon as it's, we'll we'll. we'll We'll approve it and sign it tonight, and as soon as they, uh, the town council reviews it, and we'll... What I was going to say is, the bank's comfortable. They know it's good. They're not looking for you to hurry. If you took a week with it, two weeks with it, okay. they're not running around going crazy. Okay, okay. great. They know it's coming. Thank so you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I move to allow the pledge of a license for PMP Liquors Incorporated and Businesses Pop and Cork, 1A Cape Road, pending town council review. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll thank thank you, you so much. Thank you. Uh, discussed Don Hanley's pop, uh, Pops Popcorn 82 North Ave concern regarding license renewal process. He Nobody's here. Last I heard, he was going to attend. But okay. Discuss Joyce Firth's 52 Washington Street stolen wall complaint. Pass these. 
Hi, uh, hi Joyce. Hi. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for. Um, uh, let me just pull this up. I know I, I have it in email. Hold on. Okay. Okay, so this was um, for the a portion of the, the entrance um, of your driveway. There's a <coughs> some uh, there's a stone wall with some. Um, it, they're a little higher, uh, well, like it's, pillars uh, almost. It's the entire length of my property on the front that is on Washington Street, and the two probably most obvious places of damage were those two square kind of pillars mm -hmm. that um, surround the uh, driveway. Um, apparently I wasn't home when the damage was done I was away I knew the work was going to be done on the road and went away for the weekend because I knew they were going to close the road uh, so it was when we came back at night the next day and I went out and I saw that the wall had collapsed in a number of places toward the yard not toward Washington Street toward my yard and um, I called the highway department and told them what had happened and the man I spoke with and I don't remember his name um, said yeah you know it was probably the vibration or something we were doing and I'll come out and he said uh, that's Tom Guerra's old house isn't it and I said yes it is and he said oh I know Tom I know how he built that wall uh, you know we'll, we'll come out and take a look but uh, you know I'll have some guys throw the rocks back up and I said no 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 <laughs> we're not throwing any rocks back up um, I, that that's not what happened here um, he said well I'll come out and take a look so the next day he did take a look and a friend of mine who was visiting went out and spoke with him and he said well yeah it looks like you know the road work did this perhaps the vibrations and we will um, you know we'll repair it and that rest of the season went and the winter and I didn't expect anyone would come in the winter but I did wait through the spring and then I finally called my insurance company and said I, I don't think they're coming um, they uh, will not cover vibration damage but they will cover impact um, I went and spoke with my neighbor across the street mr. Claflin who was home when all of this happened and I said did you happen to see was there any impact you know uh, and he said well you know well, he went out and his mailbox which is right in front of my wall was laying flat on the ground and he said it wasn't vibration that did that <laughs> I said I don't know I wasn't here so the insurance company said you know I have to get someone that's going to say there was definite impact for them to pay in order for them to come clean with the wall to pay for it to the repair the entire front and uh, I called a couple of contractors for some prices and none of them could really say one way or another what it was so it looks like my insurance company you know I can't go that route I'm going to have to go litigation to get this fixed um, the uh, the uh, quotes that I got the first one just for the two pillars and the little area beside it was over uh, almost ten thousand dollars so I threw that one out I wasn't even comfortable going anywhere with that one the next one was also I wasn't home when these people came so I couldn't point out the areas to them and the other one was also I thought excessive it was more than twenty thousand dollars the third one I got uh, was a man who left something on my door and I called him up and he came out and he said he would repair that entire front portion for about uh, I think it's 13 or 14 thousand dollars and I wanted to jump at that because I I know that's a really good price for that he came out he took a look um, I, I came here I, I, I brought the uh, that estimate with me and um, apparently somehow th the highway department was called and, and apparently someone showed up again when I wasn't home and tried to repair these two front pillars um, which I think is was an unacceptable job uh, I do have some pictures you can see there are rocks jutting out it's still listing toward my yard it's not tightly packed like it was 
I mean, I'm not an expert at stone walls, but I know when I first moved to the property, which was in uh, 2011, I took a, a flag on the first holiday. My husband was a vet, so I went out to put the flags in and I could barely get them in between the rocks that were the rocks were packed so tightly and now I can put my hands in between any of the rocks they are very loosely packed in um, it, it, it was an unacceptable repair it was only on those two pillars I wasn't home so I couldn't point out the other areas my son and I in order to mow the lawn we've had to move a lot of the rocks that fell into the yard we've had to either shove them over push you know roll them towards the wall or those we could lift we lifted and put them somewhere on on the wall somewhere what has happened just this year is um, a photographer came to take pictures of my kids. She happened to be leaning against that wall. The rocks fell backwards. She jumped up. No one got hurt, but the rocks did collapse just under her weight, some of them. And then I, uh, one, one day when I was home, a jogger came by and was just leaning against the wall to take a break and uh, rock uh, I was flying out there to get them off the wall and uh, a couple of rocks fell and they were able to move forward the rocks fell back towards the yard and they were able to to jump off in the front so the wall is dangerous at this point it is dangerous I don't let my grandchildren go near it um, I'm a little nervous mowing the lawn <laughs> in front of it with my big uh, it's a big tractor um, so it needs to be repaired and, and it needs to uh, according to these contractors all three of them seem to be in agreement that the rocks need to come down to ground level and be restacked um, which <coughs> um, I'd be cautious of how I even answer this now that there's you know pending pending litigation uh, I haven't been to an attorney yet so we, okay. it's, it isn't at that point yet I'm okay. here instead sure um, well I, the that was a subcontracted job to do that road so I think the request is to the contractor that did the road not to the highway department or to the, the town um, if there was any damage caused from them that would be again the, the, the contractor that, that repaved the road if it was due to the vibration um, I would assume that if it was uh, impact you know it would be you would have seen some tire tracks uh, and I, I I would have to assume again I, that if it was continually down the wall that you know they would have had to hit it a bunch of times to to loosen it up uh, vibration actually sounds a little bit more reasonable to me uh, if it had knowing that you're saying it's you know continually down down the uh, the wall but um, you know that would fall into the insurance company of the contracted company that, that did the work um, which I'm sure we can get you the information for and you can contact them um, I think the complicating factor is that the highway department did acknowledge responsibility initially to me and he came out and acknowledged it again to someone else and then they came and put their hands on it so there's got to be some kind of town liability there um, I would still at this point uh, and I'm I okay I mean, I'm cool with what you're saying yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that um, and I, like I say I don't know I mean this isn't this isn't what I do for my life. Um, right. I just, I know this wall needs to get safe um, because there's liability somewhere. Um, yeah, like I said, I, you know, maybe we were incorrect or the, the highway department was incorrect in, in, in going out there to uh, try to assist to put the wall back together um, uh, based upon the concerns that, that we had, that, that you had. But uh, um, I, I, if, uh, I don't want to say, well, you know, well, let's go back out and take it back down so that we don't have the concern. But uh, if that's a, a concern that, you know, you don't want to, that you're concerned that it would fall down on somebody again, then maybe we should, uh, I mean, again, be help, uh, find a, assist you with, you know, br bringing it down at the, at the two entrances there to where it was. Um, but like I said, as far as, as, as repair liability, I would have to say that, again, it's definitely the, the, uh, the contractor's responsibility to repair that. That's the first time hearing of that. That was never mentioned to me that there was a subcontractor involved. 
uh, my you know yeah, I mean, the way he handled it on the phone uh, it's like yeah we did it we'll take care of it you know that's how it was handled um, you know in, 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 in defense of the the highway surveyor who is here uh, mr. Tatro over there um, you know he's a pretty helpful guy and and is you know in just trying to help out is probably in just just in his nature to do that so um, if we caused uh, I'm sure if he caused any more grief because of it uh, it wasn't the intention uh, and m knowing mr. Tatro as long as I've known him uh, that you know uh, he's always there to help people so um, I don't know that uh, again I don't think there was any any malice or ill intent in his oh I don't think there was either I don't I, I'm only want and, and maybe these are okay I mean maybe if an engineer looked at them they'd say these two pillars are okay I don't know that's not what I do they don't look okay to me but that's just my opinion but I know the rest of the wall wasn't addressed because they weren't I wasn't there to point it out so I know none of the other areas where there was collapsing was were addressed so, so is the next step let's understand who the contractor and subcontract contracting parties were uh, yeah I mean that would be the avenue that I would take um, I would definitely we can definitely get you the contact information for them um, like I said I, I don't know I definitely wasn't there. You weren't there. I wasn't um, there. I don't know. You know, uh, like I said, I think if it was actual uh, damage of somebody backed into it or drove into it, it sounds a little unreasonable that it would be entire down the whole wall. Um, and again, now you, I would expect that you would see tire tracks leading up to the collision. But um, yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I think that the vibration probably makes the most sense. Um, so I, I, I would definitely reach out to the contractor and, and find out what their uh, procedure is for and so the town will have no involvement in that or can I can I count on the highway department gentlemen to back me up that the complaint was made off the bat and I, I would expect that any information yeah I would a any information that that transpired between you between yourself and the highway to highway surveyor uh, yes it's that's you know yeah, it's I, been more than a year and I guess that's what I'm afraid is someone's gonna say oh yeah yeah a year later you're coming to get your wall fixed you yeah, know? was it um, do, is it was it through email or phone calls uh, or no what? it was phone it was telephone conversations uh, I, I mean what you <coughs> would you be able to you know okay okay Well, let's, I mean, again, I think that the, the biggest question is, I'm sure we definitely get you the information, and as long as you can back up that she, you know, called on those dates and, and, and get, kind of give the timeline. I don't want them giving me a hard time about the time right. and why I waited Understood. so long to do that. Understood. Yep. Definitely will uh, support you 100%. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Alan. Uh, discuss proposed new Taft Library bond sale and terms. How are we doing? I'm fine. Very fine. What do we got? Um, I just wanted to bring us up to speed on the bond that the library has um, about to be sold. Um, well, in a few months anyways. Uh, and also uh, just sort of bring us up to date on what's going on with that. The uh, bond anticipation note that we took out to purchase St. Michael's is uh, maturing in September. That's going to be renewed and then eventually paid off with the bond that will be sold in, at the end of October, that we're planning on selling at the end of October. Um, and the last time we spoke, we um, were debating a 12-year, 15-year, 20-year term. Um, and uh, what I've come up with is a 15-year term bond. Um, and that seems to solve, that seems to do the Kind best. of balance out yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
it's more expensive than the 12 year bond but it also gives us just a little bit of room really? to play with out in fiscal year 17 not much but a little bit okay you know so if everything were to remain the same the tax bills will still go down in fiscal year 17 uh, but I mean realistically you know in a real world is that going to happen probably not but if everything were to stay the same I just don't want anybody to get the wrong impression all right yeah I don't even want to say tax <coughs> just anything's going to happen in 17 to be honest right right um, right so we're going with a 15 year note <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So what kind of what kind of um, flexibility is that giving us? This would be something where I think Rich would want to start paying attention to the call, you know, meeting now. And right. I think, Rich, the oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, actually, you know, I think the what was the number? The, the what was the buffer? With uh, between the twelve. It was like and half a million dollars. Yep. That we had at today's interest rates, which could be totally different in three years, you know. But looking forward and doing. Um, you know Clark with his best guess at interest mm -hmm. rates and everything else there was about a half a million dollars to play with okay, okay. over the course in fiscal year 17 that is what the drop in taxes would convey would equal that would be sort of the band that we, we thought afford, we might basically. be able to allocate towards other cap projects if we need yes. to yes right. without our taxes going up right. exactly Right. right. Pending everything stays the same. Yes. Correct. Bearing in mind that there is going to be a small bump uh, in fiscal year 14, yep. and then in 15, 16, there's going to be a little, little bump. Yep. But but the, the gap's going to be be things are going to start rolling off, which starts to give us yes. right. Yes. Yeah. And I did a. I don't know if it's easier to see it visually. I did do you know because I play with numbers. I like pictures. <laughs> if you want, I mean that. <laughs> That's the picture of what we. Yep. That's a picture of what we're doing. If okay. anybody wants is, to see that, is, is that actually kind of a continuation of the work that was started in terms of just kind of our overall um, debt uh, picture? Is it kind of. similar? Yeah. Kind yeah. Of. She did all the stuff. No, no. Well, <laughs> well, she should be. But does I that? Can do that. <laughs> <laughs> but the sort. But that that also encompasses some of the pictures you've made, Rich, in terms of our over. I, I haven't looked at it in great detail. So okay. Maybe we should probably do is maybe revisit it on the 26th if we're going to have our quarterly financial. Just yeah, kind of revisit it. Okay, this is just a picture of it's what nice our debt service is. Right. Total with the library, without the library. Right. But all of our debt. All of our debt. Yeah, I mean, so, so the intent great. from the first time was to say, let's not just kind of leave Fill ourselves any. Right. The, the very first plan filled in that whole gap. Right. This plan fills in most of it. And leaves a little bit. And leaves it just a little tiny bit. Perfect, huh? You know, so everybody who's in the first meeting has looked, has weighed in on this this proposal, and they think it's probably the right direction. Okay. I think so. I'm not, I can't see behind me, but I think so. Well, he's just he's, he's just sitting there. He's not doing anything. <laughs> 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 and um, the um, Clark Rowell will be getting us uh, some information that we will need to have. Uh, the board will need to um, sign off on a couple okay. of things. But this is pegged to be sold at the end of October. All the money will come to us in November, and we can have it in an account. Perfect. So, so Rich, I don't know if you could hear me, even though I was trying to lean into the microphone. Um, the 15-year makes sense, given the, the discussions from the first time we uh, talked about a 12-year versus a 20-year. 15 seems to be a, a, a midpoint that yeah, seems to make sense. Okay. The 20-year was a, an expensive proposition. Yes, agreed. All right, great. Okay. Thank you so much. Fair. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have the fire department's union contract. We don't have that yet. Is it, does our council still have it? I believe they do. I, th I think I sent it over. Uh, they sent it to me, and I sent it over while you were on vacation. So uh, could we just follow up with council on that? Uh, town court. Okay, the ongoing item of coordinator administrator position. Come on up, Rich. So I was uh, absent at the last meeting, but I saw some of the stuff regarding um, the school uh, sure. changes. I think, yeah, Rich will bring us up to date on that as far as uh, the, the town coordinator administrator position and 
<coughs> the fact that we had, uh, you know, the school was, uh, the assessment came back differently and the school was able to almost refund 55K, 53K, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, there's a possibility that that might be able to be used uh, as a halfway point to our town coordinator position. Um, we just briefly discussed it because it was so fresh at the time. Uh, and I, I, I think it requires a little bit more discussion um, yeah. to, to make sure that that is the road we want to take with it. Um, although the initial, <coughs> your initial thought on this, and I think that, I know I had it, and I'm sure that a lot of other people out there have it, is that whole piece of uh, this is just a one-time fund but if you could just uh touch on that because after you and i spoke about it i it cleared up my head on on that that's not that's incorrect it is actually right. a recurring revenue source that's right yeah <clears throat> and it just explain why if you don't mind yeah sure so uh yeah though because so what happened was that the state reduced the increase in the minimum local contribution which means that the increase the annualized increase that we got this year is going to be less than we thought it was going to be. It's going to the annual increase is going to be fifty three thousand dollars less. So next year, when we when we do our normal fifty fifty um, split of new growth and levy limit increase, that will be added to the new lower figure. Correct. That's fifty three thousand dollars less, and that's why it really is recurring. Okay. So so the fifty is coming from a recurring source. But rather than being allocated to the schools, we have the potential of reallocating that reoccurring source to the municipality. Correct. Yeah, that's exactly what I think we want to do, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And I know it's very easy for me to make a decision on um, on where I'd, li I'd like to see the money go towards the town coordinator position. Um, I think it's the most reasonable uh, place at this point. Uh, I know we do have other areas of town that need it. Um, <clears throat> I think that our goal that or my goal that I set this year was to get a town coordinator in, in into the board of selectmen's office. Um, so <clears throat> to me, it's it's the most important, and to me, it's the most reasonable place to put that money, uh, and it gets us halfway there, f uh, especially that an override was turned down. Um, and yeah. to make up the other half, I don't know. You know, again, I think that that I think that if we take if we allocate that fifty thousand dollars towards that right now, then we say we only have now we only have to find another fifty thousand right. um, dollars to to fill the gap. And that I, again, and just so the re residents are completely clear, so the total number we've been working off of the one ten includes the highest level of the span of right. of salary we talked about and it was recommended as well as the um, the family plan benefits, benefits if the person actually needed that right so it's salary plus benefits Correct. so we're not it talking about a hundred and ten thousand dollar salary right it's it a total be as package as, it could be as little as eighty thousand we need it could be as much of as 106,000. Right. Yeah, I mean, it gets back to the idea we've been talking about for a couple cycles now, fully loaded, right? Fully loaded compensation as opposed to just salary and then trying to say, oops, what about all these other ancillary right. costs? Right. So, so we've the whole obviously thing. Obviously, we've been caught by that on numerous things right. over the time, and we still continue to find different things that happen so that cause downstream impacts. I, I, you know, I'm of the opinion that I look at it as an opportunity to bring somebody on possibly six months sooner than we, we thought we would probably realistically be able to. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, uh, of the, some of the things that are out there now that we're hearing, you know, we, we clearly have some, some other places we could um, allocate funds, but I actually, th this sort of investment potentially mitigates longer term these things from popping up, you know, so I think having a, this position filled is going to be critical to, you know, assisting and managing the capital planning process, um, procurement, procurement. Uh, everything and well I mean grant writing all, all the stuff we're doing with CMRPC now whether it's the, the the Milford thing whether it's you know even some level of master planning so I mean I think this is sort of a, a linchpin to just about if people have a look at this and say from a strategic standpoint how do we move the town forward this position is the linchpin to, to really operationally move this thing forward so uh, I am not 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 to anybody ask my opinion but I'll offer it that's where I'm at. I think we should. What's we your think opinion? About the, my opinion, without too many words, <laughs> try to be more succinct. Get to the point, Mike. <laughs> no, uh, I'm just asking your opinion. No, my <laughs> opinion is I think we should move forward because I think, from a timeline perspective, <coughs> it takes a whole lot of prep or in communication around a potential override and or other revenue sources, and moves us more into execution around sourcing and looking. I would even say if we think we should do it. We're talking about let's get a uh, a, a search committee formed. 
something like along yeah, those I, lines. I would say whatever whatever the fir the next step is as far as soliciting resumes that I think that we're, we that I, I would be comfortable at this point going that process um, you know filling out an application and sending in a resume and at least be able to start to understand what our pool is of uh, folks that we're looking for so uh, would you agree and I, I think that'd be great all right I, I do think a committee might be a good thing to do just talking to looking at the way it was done in other places just because you're gonna get a large pool of applicants and I think a nice cross-section of folks to kind of assist us in whittling that down might make a lot of sense um, the other thing we had in our timeline was possibly looking for a, a almost a firm a search firm yeah um, it's an idea that's been proposed we haven't as a board weighed in on that and whether or not we want to pay <laughs> sort of outsourcing that initial wave um, how much was the, do we have a cost on that yep uh, it depends upon how deep you go and how much you want but it was uh, what the what the um, coordinate a search committee had been recommending was uh, a service that would have cost you around five to six thousand dollars if, if I, my memory serves me right and I, I think that's worth every penny of it because uh, you know we, the switching costs are going to be more than that if we make a mistake and you got to go for another one do you, what do we have do we have funds available for that uh, I, I, I think that's money you can't afford not to spend. That, that's my view, because I think you're, you're going to spend I, it anyway if you don't. I, I would agree with you, but I, I, I mean, my concern is like, where, where do you think we would take that from? Do we take it from that $50,000 um, and have, well, them, well, you, you have them start $5,000 later, or do we take it from stabilization? Do we? You, you could. You could do any of that stuff, but my, my guess is that probably we'll have sufficient money with um, free cash certified, but we'll, we'll have to Understood. see. Understood, okay. Uh, but we, uh, we still have a little bit of a gap to fill on snow and ice, don't yep. we? Okay. Yeah, we got about, I think it was 22000 something like okay. that. Yeah, so we, okay. yeah, we got some things to plug. Okay. You know, can I propose that we kind of, on the 26th, which I think is our next meeting, you know, we're going to have a large number of people I would expect here for that one because it is sort of our quarterly update. So if there's an opinion to be heard on where, whether or not we go with the search firm, how we fund it, I think we'll have a lot of people here that might have an opinion. So maybe we kind of target that, close on it in that time. Okay. But uh, do we agree that let's jump to to uh, candidate search as opposed to uh, put our focus there versus focusing on uh, a, a funding fall the override? Yeah, yes. I think I think we should. Okay, so I just want to be crystal clear on this because I may, as you already know, um, Chairman Tenio, I've already started to build. In fact, I've got the basics built already for the FY15 budget book, and so I, if the decision is that. Um, will uh, uh, you know by the time we get this person hired we'll probably be halfway through the year in which case the 53 cuts it for this year and then we just got to find the other the balance next year if that's the way we approach we want to take and, and and roll the dice a little bit which i think is a good bet i think that's probably what i would do then i'll start building that thought process into the budget i just want to be clear what well, what you're I, saying by this topic by i, this I think that's one of the options was potentially to lock it into the fy15 budget that was one of the three paths we put out there yeah. i think what we what what i think we're coming to is well let's lock in the balance 50 yes. whatever that ba gap is so from a 15 planning perspective mm -hmm. we want to lock yeah. up some you know okay so yeah yep, so make the, provision yeah, for that yes yeah. i think that that's yeah. that, that's where we go right now our first meeting of the year is coming up going to come up fast right yeah. um Fincom, yeah. is, your, is your first meeting before the 26th no, no, no. We're not meeting till till September, September. but yeah, it'll come quick. Well, I mean, I just with both of you here, it's two two mem members. Is this something that um, would the FinCom want to weigh in on this approach before we get too far on the path? Or do you think your first meeting is soon enough for us to course correct if the FinCom has any strong objections and wow. that we want to listen to? I feel pretty good about this decision, but I'm I, I don't want to. I think I, I, I don't. I think the FinCom is currently very much enjoying its um, summer vacation from fin, FinComing, if you will. So <laughs> it, I don't. It's think now a verb. <laughs> <laughs> Just like friending, FinCom. There you go. I, I don't think there's enough of a concern to, to worry about that. Um, they still will certainly have plenty of time to to weigh in once we meet in September. So I don't. Okay. I don't see the need to do it. I mean. Okay. Well, to, to me, it's more about making sure that people have an opportunity to weigh in. I don't want to just kind of ignore what I think is a group that's kind of given us some pretty good counsel in these matters. So I don't want to ignore them. Well, if you if you're making the request to meet and discuss it, then I I will do that. 
No, I think that you guys. Are yeah. No. Um. Why here? I know there was. I, I spoke with um. Uh, Rich LaRue from the Capital Planning Committee, and I know that uh, he's not. He couldn't make it this evening. I'd like to touch upon it, but I think at the next meeting. Uh, financial meeting would be the best place to talk about this uh, the the capital planning committee and just ju just interject if I'm incorrect uh, is is looking at a path um, of possibly asking for an override amount that would be allocated to the capital planning account every year so this money would never go it's not going to go into the general fund and be uh, you know, dispersed as as we see fit at, at future meetings. This would money would go right to the capital planning account. Would allow us to every year build up that capital planning account a bit, uh, and then on the capital expenditure side, we would have to go back to town meeting, and you'd need a two thirds vote to spend it. I think uh, so. so I believe that um, I, th I think the concept's a great idea, uh, and I think it's in its its in its early stages. And and I'd uh, I'd ask that it goes on to our rotating agenda along with the town coordinator position, so that we can continue the discussion on this meeting to meeting with new ideas and uh, of how that this may uh, may come into play. We have a lot of capital needs in the town. We have a lot of infrastructure needs in the town uh, that are, are all money driven. I think we're looking at 3.4, 3.5 million dollars in, in if we wanted to do everything tomorrow. Um, so uh, again, uh, for uh, I think that the number that they're looking for is 100 to 150 K possibly uh, for an override amount that that money every year would go towards capital planning. I mean, it's almost like the um, CPA funds, or uh, if, if you will, that uh, every year we there's that percentage of your tax that goes into there. We do get a matching amount from the state, which makes that a little bit uh, more friendly. Uh, but again, it's used for land acquisitions, things that we don't need to go back to the, right. the, the folks for. So uh, again, I think it's in the early stages, but definitely something that I, I think that we should continue to discuss uh, until we either discuss it to its death or we discuss it till its inception. I mean, I think a funding. A revenue source for capital planning has always been been the challenge and I think some of the policies that we started to put in place I think last year was the first time we actually allocated mm -hmm. a portion of free cash to yeah. CapEx yeah um, so if the if the committee and, and, and any, anyone else who wants to weigh in doesn't feel that that type of revenue source is not going to bring to bear the the dollars we need in the near term fast enough then uh, yeah I think it's worth a discussion yeah, okay, okay, great. Can we just add that to the agenda item? Uh, the ongoing? Great. Yeah. I think just so you know, the, this, the, um, the committee hasn't really officially voted on that yet, right? So, you're, like you said before, it's you know still in kind of discussion. Understood. Understood. I, I, I apologize like if, if I didn't. Uh, no, no. I'm curious didn't. to see the list. That's what I want to see. Yeah, that's taken us a little long. Uh, Willem probably could comment on it better than I could, but uh, it's taken us a little bit longer than probably we'd have liked to. E even work in progress, maybe on the, on the 26th, we could get an update. Okay. Great. Right. Yeah, for our next meeting, that would be great. Perfect. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Consider Bay State Trail Riders' request for poker run August 18th, 2013, in Mill. What do we got? I have a motion. Move it. I, I put a, a note on that. I <coughs> I had spoken to town council because in the past they recommended having whatever organization is using town property okay. as additionally insured. And I assumed it would apply to this, but I wasn't 100% correct because so it's recreational land. Right. So town council says it would be a good idea to put it on there, but. Okay, so the, the pending, no <coughs> excuse me, you're suggesting include the pending item as, a, as part of the motion. Right, but he said it's not but no, I would but it's not a requirement, and their their ride is the 18th, and today's the what the 12th. Yeah. So I don't I even mean, know if they can get that in time for the 18th. Oh, an insurance binder? For the uh, it's a, an additional binder on there, yeah. existing. No, they no their binder would their binder would just list the town as additional insured, right? Think. It says it specifically says additionally insured as opposed to just certificate holder. Okay. 
it's another level of coverage. Okay. Well, but I mean, I, if, if it's not 100% required and they can't get it done, then... It, but I'd be bound by the motion if you right. say pending. Okay. So this if is you Sunday, can, right? change pending to if you can. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Give you is this something that happens every year? No. Okay, so this is new. Oh, is it? I think I don't, it I don't recognize it. it. I think they have done that ride in the past, and it never came up before because I didn't know that that was an option that town council recommended because they recommended it on a different piece of property since their previous rides. When did we get the request for this? It was it was the beginning of July, but I've been working with going back and forth um, with town council. So you guys ready to they're ready to go on Sunday? And we haven't even approved this yet. Approved. I've been working on it, Mike. <laughs> to allow, just take that pending out. There. And they do take they the do have out. the certificate of liability insurance that lists us as the holder. Okay, that's what so you're it's not like for, they right? don't have any Everybody. insurance. I move to allow the Bay State Trail Riders Association to hold their poker run at Inman Hill Wildlife Con Conservation Area on August 18th, 2013. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved minutes, 5th, July 15, 29. Okay, I wasn't, these are both executive session minutes for the 15th and the 29th? Does it say executive session? It does. Oh, then, yeah. Oh, I think one of them is my meeting, right? With the dispatch union? There's a July 15th regular session, a July 15th executive session, and a July 29th executive session as well. Okay. So the, the answer is yes, there's two of each. Two from the okay. two pieces of paper. Oh, no. Um, <coughs> okay, so, and I'm assuming the executive session is not to be released at this time. Correct. All right, so I move to approve. Can I make this motion if I wasn't in attendance? I can, right? Yeah. yeah. Just I, move to, <laughs> I move to approve the executive session meeting minutes of July 15th and July 29th not to be released and the regular session meeting minutes of July 15th and July 29th. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstentions? That's me. That would be, for the record, Mike Goddard. De -de -de -de. Be -be 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 Discussed hiring conservation commission administrative clerk. Okay, so I spoke with uh, a couple members of the CONCOM. Um, Diane, if, the, if well, so generally the Board of Selectmen will put out the advertisement for the job. Okay. All right. So could we do that? And the CONCOM has asked if you would peruse <laughs> the initial applicants and narrow it down to three with your vast knowledge of the conservation commission. Okay. What shall I tell them? <laughs> sure. All right, she said sure. That makes that makes it easy for me to get back to them. So thank you. Can I work with Darlene though to get the wording? Yeah, I, I, you know something. I think that we probably we just posted it not too long ago. Why don't we just repost the same job? Oh, because that was both highway and con. con. Gotcha. Yes, definitely. Darlene is was is available to assist. Schedule future meetings. I would say we'll. Um, I'd say we just do the uh, annual town meeting, and that would be the final meeting. <laughs> what do we have? Just the 26th right now? Yep. Uh, just yep. Uh, please hold. So two weeks from the 26th, is that going to be Labor Day? No. No, the 9th would be the next scheduled meeting. The 26th is the... The first, the Labor Day is the first Sunday of the month, right? I don't know. Yeah, that, yeah it would be the first. It's always the first Sunday of the month, right? Okay. Oh, the first Monday of the month. First Monday. So the second is the uh, okay. first Monday. Um, so I would say the ninth. Oh, great. 
23rd is my birthday. Can't wait to have a divorce like my gift. Uh, so the ninth, is everybody okay with the ninth? Yep. yep. Seven. If you need the 23rd free, I, I completely understand. No, I'm fine. Uh, 23rd. October seventh. Is that Columbus? Uh, is that is that when Columbus Day is? I believe it is. Well, we can let's just go. Just book out September for now. We'll figure out October as we get closer. All right? That work for everybody? It works. Yep. Okay. <sighs> Running through this thing. Anything else? Thought I had something else. Ah, I do. Um, okay, so what we're uh, for the upcoming uh, car show, um, the 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 chief is going to is requested to work it as a detail. We have to approve that for the simple fact that the chief uh, doesn't as part of his contract is that he doesn't work details, but because it is such a major detail, he's asking that we are able to essentially charge for the detail and he'll burn a vacation day so we essentially get reimbursed for it is what it comes down to so financially it's a win that's far too much information so I so we we want to make this a detail we just have to him. approve him working a detail correct approve him working a detail because in his contract right. he doesn't work details Okay. He's use a vacation day to reimburse the. That's right. He's going to use a vacation day, which in turn, where it were by, by us allowing him to uh, work the detail instead of just working, so it allows us to burn one more of his vacation days uh, that we've been trying to get down, and also we'll charge for the actual. He'll be. It'll be a charge on the bill yep. for the for the. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, the detail, and. We get reimbursed for it, and, and whether the town actually makes money. Do you have a blank form? Motion. There any blanks under there? Under the blotter? How do we get paid by Mr. Dean on this? Does it go right to the general fund? Or it? No. it would go to the general fund. I, I kind of like to see the uh, the residuals and the designs. Right? I'd like to be the initial request that. How do you spell that? The residuals and the designs. Can you? If you could just turn around, you could get the information <laughs> there. <laughs> the treasurer collect is right behind you. I'm sure she can get you the gazigs and gazaz of that. <laughs> okay. That's the uh, item I had. Do we even need to make the smoke? Oh, and the other item was the longevity situation. Uh, we need to also just say that longevity... Uh, help me out, Rich. The longevity situation where uh, we added to, for the. Can I make a recommendation? Yeah. Make it easier for you? Yeah. So, <coughs> Claudia and I have had a, um, a scheduled meeting in the books for a couple of weeks, and I think it's next week. I can look up the exact date we want. Where our whole purpose is to sit down for 90 minutes, review all the longevity, all the impacts from the salary negotiations and the raises, figure out what line items have to be changed for all that stuff. Yep. Okay, why don't we wait then? Okay, so that one we'll wait. Yeah, that's fine. So will you have it before the 26th meeting? Okay, so let me, let me look up when the uh, Quick question on this motion. We're going to allow Chief Warren to work the Imperial Car Show detail. Do we need to include anything about vacation? No, no, just, no, because that, that'll all just flow and this is just us. We just have to allow him to do it. Formally. Formally. Okay. Because it's in his contract that he cannot work a detail. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I allowed him. Yeah, August 26th. Is your meeting before then? 
Great. I'm going to be a busy man. Sam, take quick. one. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I move to allow Chief Horn to work the Imperial Car Show detail. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Schofield. Yes, Jim. The is on 21st at 2 p.m. Perfect. So that is prior to the 26th meeting. Excellent. So if we could uh, have that as an agenda item on the 26th to discuss the longevity impact uh, and also make the adjustment to um, the uh, personnel policy longevity to match um, union, town hall union contract. Yep. Did that mean you say you wish to attend? Looking forward to I would, will not attend that meeting. No. <laughs> I will not even be at the 26th meeting because it sounds like it's going to be lengthy. No, I'll be here. <laughs> um, okay. In executive session. Anything else? Executive session it is. I move to enter into executive session uh, under Mass General Law C30A Section 21-2 to conduct contract negotiations with the Treasurer Collector and Mass General Law C30A Section 21-3 to discuss strategy relating to collective bargaining with the Menden Police Civilians Employees Association, Town Hall, Town Hall Union, and Treasurer Collector. A roll call vote is needed. The meeting will reconvene only to adjourn. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Goddard, aye. Tineo, aye. Real aye. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you. Okay. I think I have some. That's his statement.